Ancient cuneiform writings, such as the Sumerian King List and Atrahasis, show that thousands of years ago, advanced civilizations once thrived from the region of the Fertile Crescent of Mesopotamia down to the Great Nile Delta of Egypt, but disappeared suddenly without warning from a great catastrophe that occurred, known as the Deluge. To fully understand the chronological timeline of these advanced civilizations that disappeared long ago, we have to study the evidence left behind all across the world, echoed by nearly every major culture of the past, describing this disastrous flood. From ice core samples taken from Greenland, to cuneiform writings from Sumer and Babylon, we will piece together the devastating events that occurred between 11,000 and 12,000 years ago leading to a rapid end of the Ice Age and Younger Dryas period. Ancient cities like Eridu and Sharupak once existed in southern Mesopotamia near the mouth of the Persian Gulf, but were buried under a mountain of rock and debris after the deluge and became nearly forgotten to time. These cities were known as the pre-diluvial cities of Sumer, which means before the flood. It's very important to understand this term and to distinguish these events and how the deluge altered our history and understanding of these advanced cultures of the past. The Great Flood wiped away much of what existed before, causing a reset button on developing civilizations and giving rise to the post-diluvial kingdoms of Sumer, such as the cities of Uruk, Ur, and Kish. The cuneiform tablets of the Atrahasis and Epic of Gilgamesh give the best evidence for this flood, but ancient religions and cultures all across the world have echoed the same story. The Atrahasis cuneiform tablets contain both the creation story of mankind echoed from the Enuma Elish, as well as the Deluge story and evidence for who Atrahasis was, known by many names including Zayasudra, Undapishtim, or Noah, and was the king of Sharupak. Both Atrahasis and the city of Sharupak were part of our pre-diluvial history and represent a lost time period, not even taught in school. The Atrahasis epic explains that some of the ancient gods, known as the Anunnaki, decided mankind was being too loud on earth and to create diseases, plagues, and a great cataclysm so that they could be wiped out to cleanse the planet. The tablet is called the Epic of Atrahasis because it represents his viewpoint of the story, which gives great credibility for this information considering that he's mentioned as being alive before the flood in the Sumerian King List, under the name Ubar Tutu. Ice core samples from Greenland and soil samples from Canada also verify that a rapid end of the Ice Age was triggered by a series of massive comet or meteor strikes which led to devastating floods on the Earth and even a pole shift. Just imagine for a moment miles of ice across the entire northern hemisphere being liquidated by a series of comet strikes causing a torrent of water followed by massive earthquakes and tsunamis. As apocalyptic as that sounds, we have hard evidence to show it really happened. When you then account for the disappearance and extinction of so many land animals at the same time, it begins to correlate. This is why we see such a stark contrast between the pre-diluvial Sumerian culture and the post-diluvial Sumerian culture. Much of what we consider to be nothing more than a myth is often based on real truth. Tablets like the Sumerian King List prove without a doubt that these kingdoms and mighty civilizations such as Eridu and Shirupak, once thrived in the region of Iraq, in what's known as the Fertile Crescent, which were later completely destroyed and buried by the Deluge, nearly erasing all knowledge of their existence. To fully understand who the Sumerian and Babylonian gods were, and the events that led to the destruction of these past civilizations, we must look deeper into the cuneiform tablets of the Adrahasis. The Adrahasis is one of the most important writings ever found, containing answers to so many of our questions, including mankind's origin story and a detailed account of the catastrophes that struck Earth thousands of years ago. 
The Atrahasis cuneiform tablets were first discovered in 1849 in the ruins of the library of Ashurbanipal in the ancient city of Nineveh, but other versions have since surfaced from Babylon and Sippar, Iraq, all echoing the same story. The most accurate translation of these tablets was first done by Assyriologist George Smith in 1870 and was later confirmed and refined by Oxford University scholar Stephanie Daly in 1989. The following translation and reading of the Atrahasis is a combination of these two experts. Reading from Tablet 1 of the Atrahasis, it states, When the gods instead of man did the work, bore the loads. The gods' load was too great, the work too hard, the trouble too much. They took and cast the lots, the gods made the division. Anu went up in the sky, and Enlil took the earth for his people. The bolt which bars the sea was assigned to far-sighted Enki. When Anu had gone up into the sky, and the gods of the Apsu had gone below, the Anunnaki of the sky made the Ajiji bear the workload. The Ajiji gods had to dig out canals, had to clear channels, the lifelines of the land. For 3,600 years, they bore the excess. Hard work, night and day, they groaned and blamed each other. Come, let us carry Enlil, the counselor of the gods, the warrior, from his dwelling, and get him to relieve us of our hard work. Now, cry battle, let us mix fight with battle. The Ajiji set fire to their tools, put aside their spades for fire. When they reached the gate of the warrior Enlil's dwelling, it was night, the middle watch. Ekur was surrounded, Enlil had not realized. Enlil sent for Anu to be brought down to him. Enki was fetched in his presence. Anu, king of the sky, was present. Enki, king of the Apsu, attended. All of the great Anunnaki were present. The Ajiji declared, Every single one of us declared war. We have put a stop to the digging. The load is excessive. It is killing us. Anu made his voice heard and spoke to the gods, his brothers. What are we complaining of? Their work was indeed too hard. Their trouble was too much. Enki made his voice heard and spoke. Let us create a mortal man, so that he may bear the yoke, the work of Enlil. Let man bear the load of the gods. Nintu made her voice heard and spoke. On the first, seventh, and fifteenth of the month, I shall make a purification by washing. Then one god shall be slaughtered. Then a god and a man will be mixed together in clay. Let a ghost come into existence from the god's flesh, and let the ghost exist, so as not to forget the slain god. Tablet 1 of the Atrahasis provides the most detailed information we have for the true origin story of humanity, providing answers for why there is a missing link in the evolutionary timeline of mankind and what occurred thousands of years ago. So why did all these advanced civilizations of Sumer and Mesopotamia simply disappear? To fully understand our timeline of amnesia and the events of the deluge, we have to continue on with the Atrahasis. Reading further into the Atrahasis, it states, Not three epochs had passed. The country became too wide, the people too numerous. Enlil grew restless at their racket, listening to their noise. He addressed the great gods. The noise of mankind has become too much. I am losing sleep over their racket. Give the order that Sarupu disease shall break out. Cut off food supplies to the people. Let the vegetation be too scant for their hunger. When the sixth year arrived, the people's looks were changed by starvation. Only one or two households were left. Their faces were covered in scabs like malt. The people stayed alive by holding on to life. Enlil became furious and fetched Enki. We, the great Anuna, all of us, 
agreed together on a plan. Anu and Adad were to guard above. I, Enlil, was to guard the earth below. Where you went, you were to undo the chain and set us free. You were in charge of control and holding the balance. But instead, you gave wisdom to the people and knowledge. Your creations had become too numerous and despoiled the earth. You imposed your loads on man. You bestowed noise on mankind. You slaughtered a god together with his intelligence. You must swear an oath to the end, to create a flood on earth, to wipe away all of life. There was one named Atrahasis, whose ear was open to his god Enki. He would speak with his god, and his god would speak with him. Enki made his voice heard to Atrahasis. Dismantle the house, build a boat, reject possessions, and save living things. The boat you will build, roof it like the Abzu, so that the sun cannot see inside it. Make upper decks and lower decks. The tackle must be very strong. The bitumen strong to give strength. Atrahasis received the message and gathered the elders. Everything was complete as instructed. Atrahasis put all of his family on board. Then the face of the weather changed. Rain bellowed from the clouds. Bitumen was brought to seal the door. The winds were raging as Atrahasis cut the rope to release the boat. Then the flood came and no one could see anyone else. They could not be recognized in the catastrophe. The flood roared like a bull, like a wild ass screaming. The winds howled. The darkness was total. There was no sun. For seven days and seven nights, the torrent, storm, and flood came on. The goddess Mami watched and wept. However could I, in the assembly of the gods, have ordered such destruction on them? Nintu was wailing. I have seen and wept over them. Their dead clog the rivers like dragonflies. Shall I ever finish weeping for them? After the noise of the flood had subsided, the warrior Enlil spotted the boat of Atrahasis. He was furious. We the great Anuna, all of us, agreed together on an oath. No form of life should have escaped. How did any man survive the catastrophe? Anu made his voice heard and spoke to the warrior Enlil. Who but Enki would do this? Enki made his voice heard and spoke to the great gods. I did it, in defiance of you. I made sure life was preserved. Exact your punishment from the sinner and whoever contradicts your order. A man survived the catastrophe. Reading through the devastating events that occurred on Earth with the Deluge, as told by Atrahasis, along with the Epic of Gilgamesh, can be extremely difficult to stomach at times. The idea that mankind's entire future nearly ended in starvation, plague, and a devastating flood brought on by the very gods that created them is mind-blowing to consider. Sadly, despite the sheer importance of the information contained in the tablets of the Atrahasis, mentioning the Anunnaki by name, the deluge at the end of the last ice age, and detailing the true origin story of mankind, most of the academic community and society considers it nothing more than a myth. At some point, we we'll have to take a hard look at so much of what is considered merely poems and stories and begin to categorize them as the factual events of history. The epic story of humanity deserves to be known, to understand all that we've been through and how we arrived at the place we're at today. The time of ignorance for this information is over, as we finally open our groggy eyes to all that's happened in our past, and move away from all the misinformation that's held us back for so long. The real question is, Will society uncover these truths of our history before it's too late and we too disappear like so many of the civilizations before us?